hand over to Dr. Dibin for the next spe speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can go directly to Dr. Uh, Sin Jabta Sinwari uh, on a ripple risk of navigation, treat of water and water. We can directly go, yeah, Dr. Jabta Sinwari, Vice Chancellor from Pakistan, please. Sir. Uh, thank Sir. you very much uh, on the onset. Let me thank you, Anjana Singh. I bother her too much. I'm sorry uh, because uh, I was, uh, you know, having a lot of issues with myself, uh, having a new position, and then uh, we are in a fasting month. Thank you very much. Anyway, my brief presentation, what uh, I wanted really uh, to share with you is the uh, risk that we in Pakistan are experiencing uh, because of the waterborne diseases, uh, how to understand it, how to prevent it, how to mitigate it. So we 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 are working on this, and uh, this is what I wanted to share with you. Uh, you all know about it. I don't need to uh, elaborate it too much, uh, but uh, the types of diseases that we have, from bacteria to viruses to protozoa to parasites. Um, but in Pakistan, mainly cholera, typhoid fever, hepatitis A, uh, giardiasis, and uh, uh, cryptoporidiosis are the main that are uh, really causing problem. And the problem that is that we share in our countryside and in our uh, rural side, uh, no fresh water for them is available. They share with the animals and them, they use the same pond for their, uh, you know, as a water resource. So that is a great burden on us. And I have given some uh, some data to you uh, about uh, like uh, in Ravi and Patoki is in Punjab and then in Karachi, 73% uh, cases were reported. Uh, that was caused by the protozoan parasite uh, in one case only. So that is that we, th this is the bigger problem that we are talking about. Salmonella is another issue that is usually uh, related to uh, waterborne diseases through food and through direct consumption of water. Transmission is, as I said, by ingestion of contaminated water or food prepared or in one case, specifically in Karachi and in Sindh, we had a, a problem with this um, amoeba, and that is because of swimming. So the why there are diseases, we all know this, because as I said, we use this water that is contaminated by sewage, by fissile matter, by industrial waste, and by agriculture runoff. Uh, and that is the reason is, mainly because of poor sanitation, inadequate access to clean water, climate change and extreme weather uh, is another issue that uh, usually you see in the background, the, the cars and the dip and the flooding water. Uh, so that's why, and as uh, if I summarize all those water borne diseases, causes pathogen, in bacteria, we have E. coli, salmonella, in protozoa, we have giardia, in, in viruses, hepatitis, norovirus, rotavirus, et cetera, uh, we all face those problems. Uh, and we all know when we talk about climate change and we talk about, you know, uh, this uh, global warming, we understand that the Earth ocean is absorb absorbing about 40% of the carbon dioxide uh, that we emit uh, into the atmosphere that acidifies. There's another issue that... Uh, uh, our mangroves forest, Pakistan is the lucky country, I will call it in one way, that we spread from zero meter to 8,611 meter. We have every, you know, ecological zones. Uh, because along with us is again the, uh, that we, uh, we have contaminated is too much that uh, now the humans and animals are suffering because of that. This is one uh, example of uh, this infectious disease, this uh, epidemiology and its prevention. How can we, in which stage we can, I'm talking about this, uh, one of the uh, amoebas that uh, that are taken and uh, then they, they are really in trouble. Uh, it damages the brain and uh, a lot of people die because of this one uh, amoeba because of swimming, because the kids that swim in that water that's contaminated and they get it. Uh, so this is in which stage we can prevent it. This diagram easily help us to understand the 
it's epidemiology and then we can intervene to prevent such kind of things. And this case study was basically what we call it brain eating amoeba, the Niglaria. Uh, this, this has killed many people. In the whole city alone, there were 13. And then last May, August, we had in uh, Sindh, in Karachi, we had several occasions that uh, people uh, killed, uh, were killed because of this uh, uh, Niglaria. Uh, so the single celled microscopic organism that is, that causes, the, that eats, we call it the brain, uh, and the, the, the symptoms uh, are from headache to fever to nausea, vomiting and the vomiting, and then finally uh, seizures. So uh, this is that we really all are thinking about how can we really resolve these issues and how can we work. When we talk about this impact on the public health, uh, morbidity and mortality, huge rate, and that's uh, causing a lot of burden. Young people die. Economic burden because of you know uh, these diseases. Uh, several cases uh, goes to the hospital too. Loss of productivity, and uh, uh, then they, there are vulnerable population. They have said they are already below the poverty line. They don't have. They live in the far flung area. The transportation is another issues. Their weakened immune system uh, is a problem. Nowadays, the youth they eat a lot of junk food, and because of that, we all know antibiotic resistance and all this. Uh, so public health interventions are needed that uh, now how to have an access to clean water and all this. Uh, sanitation infrastructure is almost non-existing in the rural side. Uh, they just throw everything out of their homes and goes to into the air and into the environment. Uh, so we need to have hygiene promotion. And of course, vaccination is an alternative that nowadays with this uh, modern things, uh, genomics and personalized vaccine and vaccination. So things are improved that we can help. Then uh, if we talk about now the prevention strategies that we are working with the government and uh, our universities, they are all, uh, and even internationally, implementing water treatment and purification methods, uh, both in the rural area and the urban areas, improving sanitation infrastructure and access to clean water, promoting hygiene practices, and the schools specifically, uh, like hand washing and food safety measures, public education and awareness, strength and surveillance and monitoring system, uh, and collaborative efforts among all the stakeholders. That includes the non-government agencies, healthcare uh, provider facility uh, facilitators, and uh, other communities to mitigate, uh, you know, these issues. When we talk about the global impact, it's uh, now, you know, uh, uh, all this is not uh, only regional, uh, it's uh, global. So uh, we have to discuss the global burden of waterborne diseases globally, uh, again, because of mor morbidity and mortality rates that are quite high, economic impact, social implications on communities, and uh, the waterborne diseases are specifically uh, pose a significant global burden. And I appreciate the organizers, uh, Anjana Singh, for having such a meeting. This was the need of the hour that she arranged such a meeting. We all need to discuss about all this um, because this uh, th these issues are not uh, local. Uh, so this impact is profound. Millions of dollars, millions of people get ill, a lot of uh, human toll, a lot of diseases. So that is what we need to talk about this platform quite regularly so that we can would find a common solution for such problems. And these vulnerable, uh, label, uh, if you talk about those vulnerable people, they include children, elderly individuals, immunocompromised individuals, communities with little, uh, you know, limited access of clean water and sanitation, et cetera. And that is uh, the, more, the most, uh, you know, uh, worrying for the future is the antibiotic resistance that we all globally face because of the junk food, because of you know, antibiotic that are, we are using too much in animals and human in the milk and poultry, everywhere is, you know, you, you inject it. And the, the, the data in another meeting, we can again share all these resources. If you look at this, there are animals, there are humans that they, they use the same water. And because of that, uh, really, uh, we had a lot of cholera outbreaks very recently because of floods, because of other issues that we faced with. So these were the case studies that Pakistan really suffered, injected a lot of resources in there, but still 
lack of clean water, sanitation and infrastructure exacerbated this uh, problem. And we are facing a lot of high morbidity and mortality in our rural population. One of the cases, typhoid fever epidemic. Uh, this is uh, in urban slums, specifically in the, you know, people, those are li uh, living in the slums area. Uh, they are extensively drug resistant. Uh, fever reported in Hyderabad, one of the Sin city, and many people died because of this, because no antibiotic works on them then. A salmonella was recently in even the capital hospital. We had problem and it was uh, resistant to all the antibiotics. Then another case study was about hepatitis A outbreak. This has uh, in 2017, we many people died because of this due to contaminated water resources. So these were the issues that we all need to focus in. And if you take another case of waterborne disease, Zabda, these are we are running out of time. Yeah, just two minutes more. So we, we were having in the Afghan refugees that live three million people and their impact on the socioeconomic development because we have to provide resources to them. This is some suggestion for mitigation and response. And the future challenges are address emerging challenges such as climate change, urbanization, and antibiotic resistance that we have. We have a lot of free opportunities available with us, advanced water treatment, AI-based solutions, behavior change, et cetera, et cetera. And if we all work together, I'm sure we can find solutions to them. Thank you very much, especially Jana Singh for inviting. And I'm grateful that uh, you changed my time and I was able to speak to you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Bim, would you like to say anything? If there is any questions, please proceed. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Uh, Zapta Shinwari. For your wonderful talk okay. and especially enlightening us uh, Thank for, for the, you. this uh, diarrheal diseases. If not, then we will go to the next speaker and he is Professor Dr. Rajendra Joshi uh, from Department of Microbiology. He's a retired principal uh, from Yogeshwari Mahavidyalay Amba Jogal, India. Please proceed, sir. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Slide. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible.